So I got post arcade quest clarity, and since it's late, I'm awake. Let's talk about it. What's up, game? It's your boy Beast Gamer Kuma, and I have to give a shout out to Cyber Rank 10 and some other of my friends in the fighting games community for putting this mind bullet in my head that just made me go to bed and I couldn't go to sleep because it just kept on nagging at the back of my head. So, oh my god, it's all about nostalgia. I'll tell you this right now. Nostalgia in gaming and playing the arcade quest in Tekken 8 brought that nostalgia because you go around different parts of the land and hit up different arcades, challenging all sorts of people, making new friends, finding new ways of playing, learning how to play your character better, all leading up to a big tournament that Harada in chibi form, which was very nostalgic and cool, held the tournament. The Tekken World Tournament. It was it was freaking great. But before I go any further, yes, I have to do this. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. To stay tuned for other videos. Okay, we got that out the way. Let's, let's get out. So, uh, where was I? Ah, uh, yes. So, fighting games throughout the years. As you may have remembered, it was all about play to earn. You beat a boss, you unlock a character, you beat a subtype of story, you unlock a character, or a stage, or, you know, you do certain speculations to unlock certain things. Now, granted, Tekken 8 has given us one of the best fighting game experiences because there's a lot of play-to-earn stuff involved with costumes, money, stages, icons, and other sorts that you can unlock while playing the Tekken, um throughout the Tekken menu and games and stuff like that. Street Fighter 6 was also near perfect with three games in one where you had the story mode, you had world tour mode, and then you had battle hub. Now, what makes it near perfect is always the question. And I know people say, why don't you mention Mortal Kombat 1? Because honestly, I didn't pick up Mortal Kombat 1 because I didn't really like what they was doing with that one. I didn't like Mortal Kombat 11 for the most part. For the most part. But even that was... Uh, it brings to my point about how all these different transactions happen within fighting games. And I had to go back to the memory lane to figure out when did this really become more of a thing. And I'm starting to think it was with Dead or Alive series. I think Dead or Alive 4 Dead or Alive 5. We started more of the whole season pass and buying other content via vanities and stuff like that. It was just like... Why did, why did Arcade Quest give me this revelation? Well, when you play an Arcade Quest, you go, like I said, you go through different arcades throughout the land with different themes, different type of people, and you learn and stuff. And it was just like, it just made me think of the yesteryears of gaming where you pay for a game and all the content comes with that game. Now, what we do is we got to pay for the game, but you get the base game. Now, if you want a deluxe edition or championship edition or collector's edition and stuff like that, you got to pay a little bit more. Now, I bought the deluxe edition for $109. What it came with? It came with a few vanity items and the season pass. Season pass unlocks other characters, which will come out gradually. It's like how Street Fighter 6 right now. Right now, we're waiting for Ed to drop for Street Fighter 6. And that's going to be on the 27th. Now, if you don't get the season pass, you can buy the characters individually, which will, you know, how they tell you, it'll be much more than just buying a season pass. Because I think each character would be like $5.99 or something like that. And I get it. You got to make new characters. For, but I remember back in the day also, there was a paywall because the characters were already in the game, but you had to pay to unlock them, which also was bad form. Now, again, Maximilian Dude mentioned a long time ago about any games going free to play. 
at first I was thinking, uh, not a bad idea, but when you buy these games and you're seeing all the free to play mechanics within a full price game, you might as well just go free to play. That was apparent when Street Fighter V came out and they gave you the notion that you could play to earn and unlock every content in the game or if you feel that you're not good enough to do that, you could just buy everything outright. And of course, many of us are adults, and I mentioned this many times before. Businesses now prey on us being older gamers and not having as much time as we had when we was younger. So they give us the option just to buy out things outright because that's the easy way, the easiest thing to do. We don't have patience anymore. And it does show a lot between either you have FOMO or you don't have patience. Now, I did try to go through a run of Street Fighter V to just unlock everything through just playing the game. And the grind was real. Like, oh my god. And you have to be a certain level to actually earn the fight money in order to buy stuff in this game. And it was ridiculous. They, it feels like they put such a high bar on it. Like, I'm not saying it's impossible. But you do know your own limits at times. When you come into certain characters and fighting games and certain missions that you have to do. Like I said, look, well, that was just for Street Fighter 5. Luckily, they kind of learned their lesson with Street Fighter 6. But sadly, when you see some of the vanities that come out and they preyed off of some people's nostalgia, like the Ninja Turtles pack that came out for Street Fighter 6 last year. $15 for each Turtles costume. And I get it. I heard it many times before. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. Yeah, I understand. But with that mentality, it seems like some people in the, you know, behind the developers. I'm not going to blame the developers for this because sometimes they have to deal with the investors and who's back in their game. They go into this hole. It just progressively gets worse. I best example is Dead or Alive 6 or Dead or Alive 5, which cost if you wanted to buy that game now and to get all the DLC and content with that game, it's going to cost you over a thousand dollars. Why? And then with Dead or Alive 6, it was worse. To change hair color, it was going to be a dollar each time. So you better love that hair color or you're going to pay another dollar to change the hair color. And then don't even get me started with the different season passes that were like $80 or $90 plus between all three of them. And you still couldn't even finish the game. The regular story mode of the game which quest may raise a lot of questions. Oh, so this is why I say this game, like right now, even Tekken 8, it's beautiful. It's a great, fun game, but it's only near perfect. But I just kept on thinking, like, what would stop these developers from doing a season pass? What if they just put everything in the game? Would it hurt their business that bad? Like, you could probably still do the deluxe edition, but just put everything in the game we can just unlock the characters because i already know for a fact well that's not really fair to say i don't know i'm not going to be that you already announced that eddie gordo is going to come now you keep in hush hush on what other characters are going to be available with the season pass we don't know yet but i feel like you're i feel like you already have them ready and just going to announce them gradually but they're already there and it's just going to be a simple update for us to add those fighters. So, how about this? Here's a fun idea. Put in a boss battle. It doesn't have to be too difficult. But it's difficult enough so that we can go in there. Think about it like a raid. And you can make it even a team raid battle. Where we all just go in, fight this boss, and unlock the camera. Okay, that's starting to sound like Pokemon a little bit with the raid system that you have in Scarlet and Violet. Don't do that. Never mind. Don't do that. Just add the characters. Just add the characters. I mean, there's enough content in there, especially with the Super Ghost battles and the arcade and the rank battles and stuff like that. We got enough content in there that we can just unlock the character and just have, you know, this great. <sighs> and this thought process all also makes me afraid of 
a game that I always wanted to come back because Konami has the rights to it, and that's Bloody Roar. I would love for that game to come back, but then I thought about what would happen when it does. It would be probably microtransaction up to Wahoo because there's a lot of nostalgic gamers out there that would love to see Bloody Roar make a return, but then I, the industry is not where it should be at this point, where it's just too greedy. It's just too greedy, so I'd rather not have that shown up in the light of day. But it's it's just the things that it's the things that make you go hmm or why why can't we have this anymore? and so far there hasn't been any other fighting game that hasn't done it so far all the fighting games that have been coming out has a weird season pass to it no real unlocking ability to play and unlock stuff like you know characters outside of you know vanities and stuff like that but it's near perfect and I had a great time, but then it just made me think about the old days. That arcade experience was beautiful. It was well done. I have to give you props for that. But yeah, you 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 had me thinking. So, being that my final take is gonna be, I don't know. It's like this is the new norm now. Doesn't mean I have to like it, but I hope one day a developer just be like you know enough of this crap we make enough money huh we 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 definitely should just go back to the old ways of pay to uh play to earn instead of this whole pay to get whatever and or just make the fighting games free to play if you're gonna do all these weird free to play um styles in a full price game just make it free to play that's all i gotta say i can see how that's gonna go weird probably with the rollback net code and stuff like that it's I just, I just miss those times. That's why I picked up the old Capcom fighting collection and stuff like that. It was just so cool when you can just get into the character select screen and you, or like, you know, Super Gem Fighter where you just go up above Ryu or Ken or something like that. You got Akuma or Dan, weird stuff like that. Even High School Girl gave me that kind of nostalgia where they had to do a weird um button math to unlock Akuma. But if you don't do it right, you unlock Brown Ryu. <laughs> Stuff like that I missed when it made game fun. It made gaming fun. Like I said, so you, you're near perfect, but you just missed the ball just slightly. But that's all I got right now. It doesn't matter. You just have to roll with the punches. Just hope you don't get, you know, worse. Like you're doing something good right now. Keep that same energy. As always, be still.